You always hear me say that as a mainframe computer performance analyst, your processor is typically the number one resource to be concerned with and of the most interest. And this is because your processor tends to be the most expensive resource you have, and for many of you it's the most limiting because expanding its capacity or upgrading to a new processor tends to be very expensive. This is why measurement and analysis of your processor is so critical. Now during this video series, what I'm going to do is talk about the seven levels of processor measurements that you need to master in order to do an effective processor analysis exercise. This is video number one of a three-part series. Hi everybody, my name is Peter Enrico from Enterprise Performance Strategies and I'm a co-creator of Pivotor. My team and I are here to help you get great workload performance while optimizing the usage of your system resources in a mainframe computing environment. Our education and our Pivotor software are here to help you get better and faster performance results. And we're here to help you do what we do. Now if you're new here, click the subscribe button and any of the references I give in this video will be linked in the references below. So let's jump into it. So whenever doing a mainframe performance analysis, your processor, as I always say, is going to be your number one and most important resource to analyze. And so measurement of the processor is going to be critical. Now one of the things we want to do is measure the processor, but we just don't want to say how busy the processor is. What we want to understand is what is the breakdown of that utilization? Who is using the processor? What is using the processor? So as I said, during this video, what I'm going to talk about are the seven tiers of measurements, or another way of putting it is how we can break that processor usage up on seven different levels of measurement. Now, if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm going to give a, a, a reference to a paper that has a short description of where you can find these measurements, and I'll also be providing that information in other videos that you should find on this channel. So, so let me give a little bit of context to some of the discussion. First, when I talk about measuring processor activity, I'm talking about the individual processors on the mainframe, and on the mainframe there are different pools of processors. So for this discussion, I'm just going to be talking about general purpose processors. There's other pools, and you're going to be doing similar sort of exercises for those, and a lot of this discussion applies to them as well. Second, when we measure CPU, we typically talk about CPU time. I'm going to define CPU time as dispatch time, or the amount of time that work consumed actual cycles when actually running on a processor. And third, whenever you do any measurements, you're doing them for a specific period of time called a measurement interval. Some of you have one minute measurement intervals, some of you have 30 minute measurement intervals, some measurement intervals are very short, five seconds, and some are sort of medium. For this discussion, you might hear me give examples like 15 minutes, because today, while this video is being taken, the 15 minute or 900 second measurement interval tends to be the most popular with customers. So, now let's talk about the seven levels. Level one, the highest level. The first CPU measurement we're going to be interested in when measuring a processor is really understanding what is the total amount of CPU time that a processor can actually deliver to any of the workloads or system. This is actually quite a simple formula. What it's going to be is, given a machine, you're going to have some number of physical processors, and in this context we're talking about general purpose processors, you're going to have some number of physical processors, and you're going to have your measurement interval. The total amount of CPU time possible is going to be the number of physical processors multiplied by your measurement interval. So for example, if I have a five-way processor, that's five physical CPUs, and I have a 900 second measurement interval, then five physical CPUs times 900 seconds is 4,500 seconds of CPU. What that 4,500 seconds of CPU represents is in a 15 minute measurement interval, five CPUs can deliver 4,500 seconds of CPU time. So now we know what the maximum amount of CPU time is and all other measurements will be in the context of that maximum amount of CPU time possible. Now, if you're interested in understanding more about how to calculate the maximum amount of CPU time possible, I do have another video about that, so click, it, click in the references and you'll see that other video. That video also talks about dispatch time. So level one, how much CPU time is possible on the machine. Level two, 
The next level of CPU time we want to understand when doing a processor analysis is the CPU time consumed at the system image level. Now, what does that mean? At the time of this video, mainframe computers can run multiple system images on one physical processor. And I define a processor here as a machine that has some number of physical CPUs, which I said were called general purpose processors. So those general purpose processors can run multiple system images. Now the way that's done is on the mainframe computers, there's a facility called PRISM. And PRISM stands for Processor Resource Systems Manager, which is basically saying that PRISM is what's called a hypervisor. Now what a hypervisor is, it is an operating system itself, and what it does is it virtualizes the physical resources of the machine, and then we're talking about physical CPUs in this case, to the individual operating systems that are running on that machine. Now, What's happening here is that you have, in my example, is we have five physical CPUs, and now we can have those five physical CPUs shared amongst multiple system images. Those system images themselves are called LPARs, or logical partitions. Each logical partition themselves have some number of logical CPUs, and the purpose of PRISM is to manage those logical CPUs and dispatch them to the physical CPUs so that the system images and their workloads can actually consume CPU cycles to do our productive work. So the next level of system that we want to measure, or CPU measurements that we want to measure, is how much CPU time is being accumulated by each individual system image. And that is called total dispatch time for each system image. Now, the total dispatch time for each system image is what the systems themselves are accumulating. Another bucket of time you will be interested in is called physical. Now, physical is not a system or a logical partition or a system image. Physical is nothing more than a bucket of CPU time that we use to account for the amount of CPU time that PRISM itself takes to manage all of our system images or to do the virtualization. Now, you're not going to expect to see PRISM or physical, rather, to use too much CPU time, but we still want to account for that time. So level two is we're going to look at the total amount of dispatch time or CPU time that each system image is consuming and the amount of CPU time that physical itself is consuming. You add those up and you should be somewhat close to the amount of CPU time possible to be consumed, but it's not going to be because any time difference is going to be non-use CPU time or CPU time that no work was dispatched or what we can, th can think about as our available capacity. So level two, the amount of CPU time consumed is at the system level, the amount of CPU time for each individual system, the amount of CPU time for the physical bucket, and then any time left over that we know is in our total is going to be time that nobody is dispatched and is available for other work or was not used at all. That is level two. This concludes part one of our three-part series, an introduction to the seven levels of processor measurements that you need to master in the mainframe computing environment in order to do an effective processor analysis. I want to thank you for joining me, and if you're interested in this subject, down below is a link that you can click on for a paper I've written that summarizes these seven levels of measurements.